What's up guys, it's Bumpkins. Today is Wednesday, January 12th. Wednesday means new comic book day. New comic book day means new comic book haul video. As always, I went down to Infinity Flux here in Chattanooga, Tennessee for another big old stack of books and uh, quite a few other goodies as well. Uh, this was the biggest week we've had in a while. A ton of Marvel books, good number of DC books, not a lot of Image and Indies, at least for me. Real quick before we get started, if you guys are in the US and you don't have a comic shop of your own, reach out to Infinity Flux. Uh, they'll be tagged or linked or wherever you're watching this, there'll be some way to find them. Um, they do ship all over the country, so if you don't have your own comic shop and you need one and uh, you're looking for something, reach out to them and uh, they might be able to hook you up. So let's go ahead and jump into the Marvel stuff because like I said, there was probably more Marvel this week than I've seen in a while, uh, at least for me, uh, starting with Amazing Spider-Man number 85. And yes, I did read this one because again, I am caught up on this series. Uh, it's super fun to be able to read Spider-Man as it comes out. This is more of the Beyond storyline. I think we're right around halfway through, maybe a little bit more than halfway through with that story now. Uh, this had some cool Ben Riley versus Doc Ock, plus uh, Doc Ock helped Ben Riley uncover some secrets about the Beyond Corporation. We don't really know. We don't really find out what all of them are, but uh, we get a little bit of insight into... Well, I don't want to say anything, but uh, the story is progressing. It's really fun. Um, it's... I wouldn't mind seeing this spinoff or Ben Riley spinoff into his own book once Peter comes back, um, which we all know is going to happen. But uh, I really enjoy this one. And the Momoko homage to uh, Amazing Spot, or I'm sorry, Amazing Fantasy 15, uh, super duper cool. Next up, we've got Daredevil Woman Without Fear number one with Elektra as Daredevil. Um, I haven't had a chance to read this yet. I didn't get a chance to read a lot of the books I wanted to before recording this, so I'll have to read this later. But it doesn't have the Devil's Reign branding on it, but uh, as far as I know, it falls in line with uh, what's going on in the Devil's Reign books, you know, that, that came right after uh, the uh, Zdarsky run of, of Daredevil. So uh, I'm loving all of that stuff. I think Elektra as Daredevil is awesome, so I can't wait to see what this issue is about. One that I did read because I knew it was going to be awesome and I wasn't wrong, Dark Ages number four. This is probably my favorite Marvel book of any of them. Of, of any Marvel book coming out, this is probably my favorite one. Uh, and this issue was just more awesomeness. I wish, I wish, I wish that this would just be an ongoing series that would last forever and ever and ever. Um, the, the heroes are making a trip across the ocean and hilarity ensues. There's so many cool moments in this. Um, of course, the art is fantastic. We get to see cool, more cool character designs. I absolutely love this book. And again, uh, you don't have to this is all off on its own thing. It doesn't it's not beholden to any other continuity So if you're looking just for a, a good Marvel book to read then definitely check this one out Darkhawk number five. So I missed issue number four. Uh, I had I had read up through three. I missed number four So I'll have to probably wait till that hits uh, Marvel Unlimited and then uh, read that and then read this I think this is the end of the miniseries and I'm enjoying it. So uh, once I get my hands on number four We'll try that out. Try this out. Should be pretty good. Death of Doctor Strange Bloodstone number one. So just another tie-in to uh, the Death of Doctor Strange storyline. I didn't have a chance to read this one either yet. But uh, like I said before, I haven't loved the uh, Death of Doctor Strange tie-ins. They haven't really... I don't know, they haven't really moved the story forward, and tie-ins don't normally, you know, or don't always do that, but, you know, sometimes they could. So, like I said, the Spider-Man was pretty good, the rest of them I could take or leave, so um, I'll be interested to see which way this one goes. Devil's Reign Superior 4, number one, so this is part of the Devil's Reign storyline, which I'm really enjoying. Um, I want to say that this might be the first tie-in to the Devil's Reign storyline that has been released. So again, haven't had a chance to read it. We'll see if uh, how much it actually ties in, how much it actually contributes to the overall Devil's Reign storyline. But uh, I couldn't pass up a story of Doc Ock trying to get other Doc Ocks from other Earths, other multiverses, so that should be pretty fun. Fantastic Four, number 39. So I didn't get number 38. But uh, I did get all the Bride of Doom stuff and just that whole that whole segment um, before this. I went ahead and got this because I'm really pumped for the Reckoning War. Um, like I said, I've caught up completely with Amazing Spider-Man. I've also caught up with Miles Morales Spider-Man, and I caught up with the Ten Issue Champions series that came out um, this year. All that to say, my next one to catch up on is Fantastic Four because I want to uh, read the, all the Reckoning War stuff when it comes out. So uh, I just barely started the first issue of Dan Slott's run last night, so I'll eventually be getting to this, and uh, I'm really excited about it. 
One that I did get to read, a Hawkeye Kate Bishop number three. This is a fun mini series, but I feel like the story is getting away from me. So I can't, it's hard for me to remember um, what happens from one issue to the next in this one, because there's a lot of moving parts, I feel like. There's a, there's a missing child and then a missing ring, and the ring is something else, and there's her sister, and then there's a, so um, I do like it. I very much love Kate Bishop. I think she's a fantastic character. I think this one uh, probably is better read in trade, but since I've already gone halfway through, I'll probably just get the rest of them. It's a good story. I just need to read it all at once. King Conan number two. I haven't read the first one yet, but like I've said before, I'm really enjoying the Conan original Marvel years. Uh, I've got the first two omnibuses and I think another one, uh, but I've been reading that for my History of Marvel videos. Those are a lot of fun. Uh, I haven't ever read a modern Conan book, so I'm excited to... I've got some others. Uh, another one we'll see here in a minute. But I'm excited to try those out and definitely excited to try these King Conan books. So speaking of modern Conan, Savage Avengers number 28. This is the last issue of this series. I actually haven't read any of this series yet, but I do have the whole thing across trades or individual issues or whatever. Actually, I missed it. I missed the last issue, number 27. I wasn't able to get my hands on it. So um, by the time I catch up, it'll probably be a Marvel Unlimited. But um, it, it seems cool though, Conan hanging out. Well, we've, on here we've got Doctor Strange and Magic. Uh, those are the only two on this cover. But Conan hanging out with the Avengers sounds fun, so I can't wait to catch up on this one. Spider-Woman number 18. So I'm not currently reading this series but this is a devil's reign tie-in and i've said it before i'm a sucker for all these events and all their tie-ins i have to get all of them uh this it remains to be seen how much this actually ties into that but um it does have the cool villain's reign variant uh cover uh, so i'm gonna read it and we'll find out and then last for marvel is wastelanders black widow number one so like the other wastelanders books i'm holding off on these until i can reread old man logan i definitely going to at some point uh, it's right over there my trade ports right over there i'm gonna get to it uh i just want to reread that get it refreshed in my memory and then check out all these wastelanders books but i really like um i really like that world um you know that that post-apocalyptic world that they've set up and i'm hoping that these will be just as good as for dc we've got some good books as well batman urban legends number 11 so i haven't caught up on this series yet um and i think i'm gonna hop off on this one because all of the stories in this one are part one i think there's three or four stories and they're all part one of a new line of stories that they're going to tell over the next six, six issues so i think i'm gonna hop off and just wait for the trades or maybe dc universe infinite but i've got the first 10 to catch up on i do like these anthology books but um, I just this is another one I just don't need every month. But um, but I will catch up on the ones that I have. Plus uh, Ace the Bad Hound, that's awesome. Detective Comics number ten forty eight. So like I said, I haven't caught up on all the the tiny and era bat books. You know the Tom Taylor Nightwing and the Detective Comics and all that. But I did read uh, Detective ten forty seven, which was the start of the Arkham Tower storyline. I think it's a twelve part story, and, I, and it's coming out every week too, which is really cool. So this is the the second part of that Arkham Tower storyline. Um, not a lot of action. This is more a look uh, inside Arkham Tower, but uh, some you know some seeds of mystery are planted uh, for things to come. So I really uh, I can't wait to see how that shakes out. Future State Gotham number nine, another series I'm behind on. Another of that era of Bat books that I haven't caught up on. So uh, I did flip through this one though, and the art's fantastic. It's you know that black and white manga type style, which is pretty neat, um, and that's a cool cover. So uh, I'm looking forward to catching up on this one. And then I Am Batman number five is another one that I haven't caught up on yet. So I don't know. I thought this was maybe a mini series, but it might not be. I'm not sure if it's five issue, six issue mini series, or if it's an ongoing. But uh, I'm going to catch up on this one at some point as well. And then along those same lines, Joker number eleven, another bat book that I haven't caught up on yet. But I, you know, I've been getting them all. And that's an awesome cover, so I'm going to catch up at some point. I did read Robin and Batman number three. This is the end of this three issue mini series. Um, and this was really cool. Uh, it, it's a lot of Killer Croc, uh, Robin versus Killer Croc, um, you know, with uh, maybe he has to save Batman. What's really cool about this is we see Robin in this issue is kind of dark. Uh, dark like you would expect maybe Jason Todd or Damien to be. He's kind of like that, but by the end of the story, we see how he gets out of the darkness and into the light that Dick Grayson is known for. So that was a really interesting story. Um, it's only three issues. Uh, this is a really fun uh, series. I think I probably still like the second issue the best. His, the, his whole interaction with the original Teen Titans and then the one page at the end that sort of flips out on its ear. But um, as a whole, this is a really great miniseries. 
And then I did read this one too. Teen Titans, or I'm sorry, Titans United, number five. This story is fine. You know, it doesn't really um, thrill me, but it's a good story. Uh, it's a seven issue miniseries, or mini, maxi, mini, mid series. I'm not sure. But I've been trying to get all of these uh, B covers because they're fantastic. Uh, you know, it's just uh, it's just a, your average Titan story with all the characters from the show and they're fighting against Blackfire and she's, you know, doing stuff with Superboy and I won't say any more. But uh, it's a fine story. One that isn't, you know, hugely amazing, but it's still fun. And that's what comics are supposed to be as fun. So it was a light image and indie day, but we do have a few. A rain at number one from Image Comics. This is another one where, say it with me kids, I don't remember what this was about, but it sounded cool and I pre-ordered it. So I can't wait to read it and be surprised. The Scorched number one. This is, I want to say, the last of the Spawn's universe books. You know, the Gunslinger Spawn and King Spawn and Spawn and then this one. Um, I haven't caught up on any of the Spawn stuff yet. But uh, I'm going to try to because there's a big sale on Comixology right now for Spawn stuff. So I'm going to try to get some back issues and get all caught up. But I had to go with the Brett Booth cover. This is the connecting cover with two others that I think I have. So I'm going to try to fish those out and take a cool picture. But um, I did flip through this one too. The art looks great. So I cannot wait to see what all this stuff is about. Picked up Maniac of New York. The Bronx is burning number two. I love the first volume and then realized I haven't read the first issue of this new volume yet, which is weird because I liked the first one so much, so I need to get on that, but um, I can't wait to see more. I, like I said in, when I was reading the first volume, I hope they expand on Harry's origin more, or maybe I just hope that there's something that makes him different from your typical Jason Voorhees, Freddy Krueger slasher. Like I, I feel like there's some seeds there that might flesh him out make him a little bit more different but uh we didn't get it in the first volume hopefully we get it in this one and then the last issue number five of odin's eye from bad idea this came out weekly so you know over the last four or five weeks we've been getting all the others i haven't read any of them yet i was waiting for this one now that i've got it i'm gonna read them all i also picked up a couple books from the dollar bins just some more iron man books to help me uh fill in some gaps in the iron man run that i'm building so iron man number 173 and 181 and uh, 184 and then 185 and then from the regular back issues not really a comic but uh, well it doesn't have a number but it's from fall 1984 uh, comics collector magazine so I love old-school magazine fanzines type, uh, like this it's got uh, John Byrne Fantastic Four uh, on the cover, there's a, a bit about uh, Supergirl in here. This is pre-crisis, so it's going to be interesting to read this and then know what's what her fate's going to be a year later. It's got 10,000 comic value, so that's going to be super fun to look through and see what the value of comics were, you know, back in 84. And it tells you how you can get money from comics. So as soon as I read that and learn how to make money from comic books, I'm going to release a whole series of videos explaining how to do it based on this 1984 magazine. So I might try to make some TikTok content off of this just because I love this, you know, I love delving back into the history of comics as evident with my history of Marvel videos. But uh, just I just saw this one and thought it would be really, really fun to look through and sort of uh, revisit the glory days of comics. But the fun doesn't stop there. I've got some collected editions as well. That Texas Blood Volume 2. So I read the first volume in trade and it was really good. Started to get them in singles after that and then realized this is another one of those stories that's better read all together. So um, I really enjoyed the first volume. Can't wait to jump into the second volume. This collects, uh, I want to say it's 6 through 10, um, something like that. I don't, oh, 7 through 12. So seven, yeah, it's another six issues. Um, but yeah, this should be super fun to check out. I don't know what this is about, but my buddy Andy, who works in Infinity Flux, um, we, we talked about this a while back. Um, he got a copy and said that it's really good. So I got Garbage Man from Dark Horse. Um, I don't know anything about this, but the art is really nice in it. Um, it uh, is kind of, you know, kind of looks like Swamp Thing, but garbage instead of the green, I guess. Um, I just, I don't know, you know. If, if Andy said it's awesome, then I that was good enough for me to check out, and I'll see if it's awesome. And I picked up the trade paperback for Black Friday. Uh, I did get the first two issues of this, but um, as with all Scout comics or Scout imprints, I just have trouble getting those, and I don't know what the deal is with those ones specifically, but they, it just seems like they don't... It's not my shop's fault, it just seems like they don't show up when they're supposed to, and I don't really know why. So, uh, but 
again, this is probably better read in trade anyway. So, um, uh, an unlucky af after Black Friday, you know, Black Friday is a nightmare. An unlucky cleanup crew deals with the aftermath of the latest Black Friday frenzy. Uh, years of pent-up negative energies release something very evil and dark into their superstore, which is just the way corporate wanted it. So, uh, yeah, this looks um, super cool. Uh, I don't even know what to expect, but uh, it should be pretty, well, hopefully it'll be pretty neat. And one that was an impulse buy today, uh, my shop actually ordered one for uh, another customer. I ended up getting two of them, so I took the other one off their hands. Uh, I didn't pre-order this, but it was just there, and I just I couldn't resist it. So this is the X-Men Omnibus Volume 1. So this just collects the original X-Men 1 through 31. Uh, you know, just the classic Stanley, Jack Kirby, X-Men. I don't... Uh, I didn't read this run of X-Men for my History of Marvel uh, reading and videos. I don't really love this era of X-Men. Um, a lot of this early Silver Age Marvel stuff isn't the best. But um, just in the spirit of wanting to have an archive and a library of the history of all these books that I love so much, I wanted to get this one. Admittedly, I've not read more than just a couple of them, so maybe I'll just read this without the pressure of having to summarize it in a video and make tweets and posts about it and stuff. Maybe if I just read it of my own volition and not really do anything else, uh, maybe it'll be a little bit better. But um, yeah, I was just sitting there and uh, it looked awful lonely and... Um, I love omnibuses, so I had to get this one. And then last but not least, uh, one that I actually got from Amazon yesterday because I missed the final order cutoff to be able to order it from my shop. So uh, this one was from Amazon, but it came yesterday, so I thought I would include it with all this stuff. Uh, Batman No Man's Land Omnibus Volume 1. So this collects a whole bunch of stuff, the, you know, the, the No Man's Land story arc where Gotham, you know, from the Cataclysm stuff, uh, Gotham gets cut off from the rest of the country pretty much and the government basically just leaves it on its own and, uh, you know, Batman and family have to, you know, sort of take care of all the crime that's going on in it. So I did get the uh, Road to No Man's Land omnibus it's right over there and then this one had to go with it. So yeah, it collects a whole bunch of stuff, but um, this is a great way to read this because it collects everything that you need and it puts it in a certain order rather than try to just read it issue here issue there i just thought this would be a really cool way to read this story i've actually never read this story uh in its entirety so it's cool to have this i uh, can't wait to uh, break into that so that's it guys uh, a big week like i said probably the biggest week that we've had in a while at least the biggest week i've had in a while but uh, a lot of good stuff i can't wait to dive into all those marvel books that i didn't have a chance to read because there's a lot of good stuff in there right now so guys I appreciate you watching. If you like this video or any of the other videos on my channel, maybe consider hitting the subscribe button. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like this video, give it a sarcastic thumbs up. And if nothing else, leave me a comment below. Uh, let me know what you picked up this week. If you got any omnibuses or was it a big week for you? Uh, you know, was it bigger than normal or was it about the same? Just let me know. I love comic books. I could talk about them with a room full of people or just to a camera. Guys, don't forget, comic books are supposed to be fun. There is plenty of stuff out there that everybody can look through it all find something you like and it, there's so much stuff that uh, it's easy to focus on what you like and just ignore the stuff that you don't like and let everybody else enjoy that stuff so guys uh, also don't forget that uh, it doesn't matter how much stuff you buy every week um, what makes a great comic book haul is that the stuff that you get whether it's one book 10 books 100 books uh, the stuff that you get matters to you, it's special to you, it brings you excitement and joy, and you're just excited to sit down on the couch and read it. That Dark Ages, when I read it earlier, I was sitting on my couch upstairs, and was just like exclaiming, audibly exclaiming, when big things were happening. So as long as you are, you know, just happy with what you get, that's what makes a great comic book call. So guys, I appreciate you watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.